everyone, my name is Trina Belamide. I am a songwriter and record producer. And if you are meeting me for the first time here on my channel and you'd like to get to know me a little better, you can check out my website. I'm posting links in this video and below. Today, I'd like to talk about something that every single songwriter should know, and that is music publishing basics. I'm talking about just three very important rights mechanicals, synchronization, and public performance. Now, mechanicals or mechanical reproduction has to do with a sound recording. Now, it's important for all of us to understand that there is a distinction between a song and a recording. When it comes to the song, it is the songwriter or publisher that is in charge of administering the rights. And when it comes to the recording or the master, it is usually the record label. At the heart of every recording is a song. No song, no recording. We all need to realize the value of the song. Every time a recording is made, a copy or a reproduction of that song is created. Now the business of recording has actually not changed, even though the way that music is sold or consumed has changed through the years. Before we had vinyl, and there is still a market for that, and we had cassettes and CDs. Record labels made money off of every copy sold of each one of these. And so for every unit sold, each song in the album would get a percentage of every copy sold. Nowadays, with digital music, it's essentially the same thing. It's just that the figures have become much smaller. But each recording that is streamed or downloaded still makes money. Record labels and digital service providers, they all make money because of the song. And so it's only fair that every song in every recording gets a small percentage of that digital revenue. A mechanical license is issued by a publisher or songwriter to a record label. It is permission to create a version or reproduction of the song, and the songwriter should ultimately earn a fair share out of any revenue produced by that master or sound recording. Now we go to synchronization. When it comes to sync licenses and sync fees, these have to do with anything that involves visuals. We're talking about movies, TV shows, TV commercials, gaming, karaoke or video -ke. All these pay sync fees. Usually it's a one-time fee that's negotiated. It's unlike mechanicals where a song earns with every copy of the song that is sold, downloaded or streamed. This fee is negotiated depending on many things, like how popular the song is, or how long it's going to be used, or where it will be used, like what territory, is it just a local usage, or is it going to be international, how many minutes or seconds of the song is going to be used, and so on. So there are many factors that come into play when negotiating a sync license, and that's why there is no standard or fixed fee for any one song. And finally, we have the third, which is public performance. Now, believe it or not, every single time that a song of yours is publicly played or performed, you are actually owed a performance royalty. Now, who pays these public performance fees? Places like shopping malls, restaurants, hotels, bars, clubs, concert venues, music lounges, even airlines and hospitals. Also broadcasters like TV networks, radio stations, even digital service providers which make your songs available to the public for streaming and downloading. All of these pay public performance fees to be able to play music. Now, how do they pay and who collects these fees? Every country has its own PRO or performance rights organization. In the Philippines, it's PhilScap, the Filipino Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. In other countries, there's ASCAP and BMI in the United States, there's Cash in Hong Kong, there's JazzRack in Japan, there's APRA in Australia, SOCAN in Canada, and so on. Every single country has its own PRO. What they do is issue a public performance license to each of these establishments and they all pay a fee, usually it's an annual fee, to cover all the music they'll be playing for the year. 
The PROs collect these fees and they distribute to their members, which are the songwriters and publishers. Now, because these PROs are actually interconnected and affiliated with one another, whenever your song is publicly played or performed in another country, that country's PRO, let's say your song got played in Japan, Jazz Rack, which is their PRO, will give your public performance share to your country's PRO, who will in turn give it to you. That is how it works. And so this is why it's important for every songwriter to join a PRO. If you don't join a PRO, you could be missing out on public performance royalties that should be collected for your songs. And so there you have it, the three very basic but three very important rights that every songwriter should know and understand. Mechanicals, synchronization, and public performance. If this video has been helpful to you, do give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear what they are, please comment below. I shall reply and respond to each of them. And I will be creating videos in the future that go into more details about these things and so much more. So please hit the notification bell to be sure that you don't miss out on any of the videos I upload in the future. Also subscribe to my channel and please check out my past videos as well. I'll be seeing you very soon.